This is the Sony X-H90, or in the US it's the X-900H. Now this is a TV which I've had now for roughly a month, but it's taken me a few weeks to get used to it. Now this is a TV which when I first opened it up and unboxed it, I thought it looked good, but I didn't find anything that remarkable about it. But boy, has that changed. And this TV has really, really grown on me. And now it's definitely one of my favorites. Let me explain a little bit more. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So let me first of all give you some context behind this review. I paid for this TV, I am not being asked to say anything good or bad about it, and so therefore all of the thoughts are my own. Now the first thing that I would say is this has already dropped significantly in price since I bought it. You can save around £300 or $300. I will leave my latest affiliate links in the description for you, but you can pick this TV up now, the 55 inch version, for around £1,000 or $1,000. One of the best features of this TV are HDMI ports 3 and HDMI port 4. They offer HDMI 2.1, which means that you will get 4K at 120Hz. And when the new consoles come out later this year, then you'll get the best possible refresh rates on the TV. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you will also notice that HDMI 3 port is also the EARC, or the ARC port. And so therefore, if you are using that as an audio return channel, then you'll only have one HDMI 2.1 port available. So that's something to bear in mind if you were having two consoles, for instance. We will talk a little bit more about gaming later, but first of all, let's talk about the operating system. This is a Sony Android TV, and as many of you will already know, this is the best operating system of any TV, certainly in my opinion anyway. Having direct access to the Google Play Store means that you can download a whole host of applications that you wouldn't normally find on another TV, and this negates the need for a third-party device. The only app that is really missing here at the moment is the Apple TV app, but that has been announced that that will be coming later on in 2020. Now, one thing that you'll like as well is the remote control that comes with this TV. It's one of the more premium Sony ones, and it feels really good to hold, and it's very efficient, got lots of different controls, as you would expect. The one thing, however, that I would say is that this thing is long. It's like a wand swinging around the room, so you do have to be quite careful. And sometimes stretching from the bottom buttons to the top, well, it's just impossible, and you almost have to then slide the remote control up and down your hand. So that's a little bugbear, but it's a minor one. It's not really really a problem. Now in a previous video I did the unboxing and the setup so I'll assume that you're already at that stage. You can get quick access to some of the settings by pressing the settings button once. This will then bring up this menu along the bottom and here you've got controls to switch different picture modes. You can change the brightness, parental controls, turn the picture on and off or check out your notifications. But if you click on the settings button again then that will take you into the full settings and here you've got access to all of the controls to change the display how you want. Now by pressing the input button on the remote control or on the home screen brings up the menu from the bottom and here you have quick access to all of your different options. Now some of these are automatic so for instance if you've got something connected to HDMI 1, 2, 3 and 4 they'll automatically appear in that list and you can see that they're ticked and it's indicated with an auto sign. However there are some other things that you can add and if you scroll along you've got all of the different apps which if you wish to you can add them to your bottom which again is just a nice feature and a very quick way of accessing your favorite applications. So now it's super simple when you're just watching normal TV to press the input button once, get the bar come up, and you've got access to all of your different sources as well as your different applications. You can just scroll across and select whichever one you want. Staying in that top corner of the home screen, you can also access timers. Again, this is really good if you just want a quick access to a sleep timer, for instance, rather than going through hundreds of different menu screens. So I really like that. But now onto the main settings. And here you can go in and change all of the different settings of your TV. You obviously can choose a different name for it. For instance, you can give it a standard name or you can give it an individual name. 
Most of the menu options are self-explanatory and you can literally just go in and play with those as you wish. The one that you'll probably want to spend most time on is the picture mode. Here you've got different presets, but you've also got a very comprehensive custom setting mode. And here you can go in and literally change a whole host of things. Now, if you want real clarity as to every little thing that this does, and I do recommend that you check out Vincent's channel at HTV Test because he goes into all of the detail of absolutely every level of this. And for those people that are interested in that type of minute detail, he is far better qualified than me. But just to say that this is really impressive that you can go in and change these different settings. Now, the option that I found the most realistic and the most easy was the standard picture mode. Everything else was quite horrendous. Vivid, as we all know, is always shocking. But the standard picture mode was really, really good. And what I would recommend you did is to change your custom mode to the standard settings and then make the adjustments depending on what you want to do. So if you want to adjust the black levels, the motion settings and things, then do it from there. One of the options obviously is auto local dimming and it's important that you obviously keep that on because otherwise you're losing the benefit of having dimming zones. Standard mode on this TV for most people will be absolutely fine. You can go in and change the different settings through custom mode or go to the other presets like cinema, vivid if you're mad and game. So the image that you're looking at now isn't from a cable or high definition satellite box, it's just from a standard plastic coaxial aerial. Now that's one of these things that just plugs in the back and sticks up somewhere in the room. And as you can see, I've got mine just within the room. I featured it in a previous video and I was absolutely blown away with how good a job this does at a finding the channels and displaying a great picture. So I'll leave the link in the description if that's something that you may be interested in for yourself. But certainly the days of me clambering into my loft with an aerial are certainly gone. These things work brilliantly. Now, a really important feature nowadays is the fact that you can get a soundbar underneath the TV. This is my Sonos Beam, and as you can see, it fits like a glove. You have room of around seven centimeters or just under three inches to put any soundbar which measures that type of size. This being a backlit LED TV means that it's not the thinnest. It also means that viewing angles are not particularly that great, but it's going to be fine for most people in most rooms. The physical look of the TV, I think, is great. It looks like a traditional Sony TV. It's smart. It's got good quality materials. I actually really like the feet. I've seen other people in other videos say that they're a little bit light, a little bit basic, but they're made of metal, and I think they do a good job, and they're not too much in your face. However, they do only stay in one position which is a little bit frustrating if you've got a narrower stand. Now reflections, you're going to get a certain amount of reflections but again they're not too bad at all. As you can see you can just about see a window in the distance here but it's not too bad. As I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, I wasn't too thrilled about this TV right from the very start. However, it's something which has grown on me. I tweaked the picture settings, and now I think this TV just represents fantastic value for money, especially at the new discounted price. Now, what you're getting here is a TV with local dimming zones. Now, Sony never advertise how many local dimming zones there are, but it's between 16 and 32, we believe, with recent reports suggesting that there's definitely 32 to local dimming zones. Now, it does appear that the number of local dimming zones doesn't really matter too much because it's what the TV does with them, which is the main thing. And certainly when it came to blooming, we didn't really see too much of an issue. You did get a little bit because you will do. It's an LED TV after all, but it wasn't something which was that noticeable even in gaming. In fact, we found the picture quality right across the board to be better than expected. We found the colours to be sharp, vivid, but not too in your face, and the black level delivery was surprisingly good. We were really surprised at how close this came to delivering perfect blacks, as this shot will show you. Now, we will do a comparison with this TV and an OLED, just to show you that there is still a difference. But boy, this is very, very good considering its price point. Now, obviously, when you're watching TV, you're not having a second TV side by side, but it will be interesting to see how close they are getting. What I have noticed over the last 12 or 18 months is that gap between OLED black and LED black or QLED black is definitely reducing, and it's been noticeable how close they're getting. They really are delivering vibrant colors with brightness, but also keeping those black levels surprisingly dark. 
So guys, I would be interested to hear what your thoughts are on the picture quality of this TV. Remember, this is around £800, $800 cheaper than the OLED of the same size. Now that is a significant difference, and I'm just thinking that that represents very good value. In terms of gaming, the real test will be when the new consoles come out later this year, but having that HDMI 2.1 definitely gives this a big advantage. And again, it's just another reason that it makes this TV value for money. We felt that the response time was completely adequate, there was no real issue, no real lag that we noticed, and it didn't matter whether we were playing online or playing just a racing game, we found that it was fine. But we'll do a further test on this TV when we get the new consoles come through. So my friends, in summary, I think that this is great value for money, especially now at the new price. Remember, just around five weeks ago, I paid £300, which is around $400 more for this TV. I'm a little bit gutted, but I've still got a nice TV. Remember, this has local dimming, it's got Dolby Vision, HDR10, HLG, and all of these are great features, and two HDMI 2.1 ports. So all of that makes this great. But the other things that are brilliant about it are A, the looks, I think it looks great. B, the Android setup, which we know Sony Android TVs are great and this performs as good as the OLED. I don't think there's probably any difference in the processor. And obviously the picture quality, which hopefully this video has demonstrated to you, is absolutely superb. And remember those black levels that we spoke about. Guys, I'll leave some links in the description. If you do buy through one of those links, it will bring back some of that £300 I've lost, so just consider doing that, guys. But check them out for yourself. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think of this review and is this a TV that you would consider. So, guys, I really look forward to seeing you on the next video.